Hello guys, this is Arnav and welcome to The Bro Thing. Now in this video, I want to talk about solo gaming. Now this is one of the things that most people fear, going out alone and talking to that beautiful girl. But in this video, I want to address those fears and I want to give you a path that you should follow when you're out in the field all alone, getting scared talking to that girl. So this video, we're going to talk about what to do, the mindsets that are required and the limiting beliefs that are going to hold you back. So without wasting more time, let's get right to it. So before I even start, I would like to share with you my story. When I started game, I was back in the day, you know, I was 17 years of age and I was in Singapore. Now, most of you know, I started alone, right? Now, the reason I started alone was, you know, I was just a kid who was sent from India to Singapore to complete his education. Now, at that time, I didn't have a lot of friends. I didn't really know anyone in Singapore. So I went there, you know, and I, the only people I hung out with was my college friends. And they were not into gaming or pickup as much and not as much actually, not really into that and when I used to take them in the field they used to look at me like I'm some sort of creep doing some creepy shit and you know like in the first year when you're doing game you actually suck so at that time you know I was really bad at this and I was just learning the skill and most of the people who I used to go, who I used to bring to the field with me they used to come for one time and never used to come again so for three years of my life like I would say three and a half years of my life I was completely solo, I was pick, doing pickup all alone. Now I'm not a guy you know, who's writing an article on how to get laid for a magazine or you know, for online, but I'm a guy who's been doing this for the past decade of my life. Now I've had the craziest nights and I've had the best of the epiphanies when I was doing solo gaming. What it means is going out in the field all alone and approaching people. I know you might be thinking, whoa, that's just so tough, right? And it does require a lot of balls, but after watching this video, you will be able to do it just perfectly well. Even before we go on to the how-tos and the what-to-dos, let's talk about the mindsets that are required for solo gaming, for going out in the field all alone, all by yourself and performing the out of pickup. Now, the first thing you have to understand is you're never really alone when you're going to the field. Now, what I mean by that is if you're doing the out of cold approach pickup and you're going out in the field, whether it's day game, whether it's a mall, whether it's, you know, like a nightclub scenario, you're never really alone. People are surrounding you all over, right? And you can just go and talk to them. That's what cold approach means, talking to different people. So if you're talking to someone, how can you be alone in the field? All right. Now, the first thing is uh, get this thing out of your head that, you know, you're all alone in the field and because that's going to give you a lot of negative thoughts. So get this thing completely out of your head and watch this infield. Maybe this helps. <laughs> to be honest. He's my son. What's What's your name? What's up, man? How's it going? Nice to buddy. Also, understand, everyone is your friend. No one is out there to get you. No one is out there to fight with you. No one is out there to put you down. All right. Now, if you have a lot of insecurities, you might be like, oh my God, you know, I don't know how to approach. Maybe these guys are going to fuck with me and maybe they're going to beat me up. But nothing like that happens. It's all irrational fear. And the reason is because people are going out to have fun, to have a good night. They're not going out, okay, I should spoil this guy's night. How is he trying to do pickup? First of all, understand no one is, uh, no one is aware that you're doing pickup. Right? People think that you're just talking to random people, you're just making friends. Right? Only you are the one who's aware about you know, you're doing pickup. So don't think that I'm going to do something that's negative so people are going to fight me. All right? Now, I want you to watch this infield to understand that it doesn't matter how many girls you open, it doesn't matter how, matter how many people you talk to. Everyone is there to have a good time. The third point being you don't really need a wing to game. 
Now, for the people you know who are watching this, what happens if you're traveling to a new country? What happens, you know, if your wing is flaking on you? Are you going to be emotionally dependent on a wing for the rest of your life? Now, I don't think so. What happens, you know, if you are walking down the mall, you know, trying to buy something for yourself and you see that beautiful woman, are you going to wait for that wing? You don't really have to get a wing in order to game. Now, the last point, nobody can pull for you, right? Now, if you are an advanced guy, you know, reflect back on most of your pulls and you would understand that the time you pulled the girl was because of you, but because of what you did and not because of some other guy, right? And nobody will pull for you. Why would anyone pull for you? So one thing you have to understand is at the time of the pulling, you're mostly alone. So understand this point that once you're pulling, you're mostly alone, right? And nobody will be able to pull for you. Now, this might make a pull a bit more harder when you're going out alone, but it doesn't mean it's not possible. Now, before we proceed on to the how-tos, if you guys want, really want to find a wing, join our Facebook group and you can find a wing easily over there, whichever part of the city you're from. Or if you're from a different country, you can still join our Facebook group because there's a lot of value that is shared. Now, apart from that, follow me on Instagram as well so that you can avail all the special offers that we have and the free giveaways. Now, without wasting much time, let's get down to the how-tos. Now, the first thing I do if I'm going out to a club all alone, and if I'm really in my head, if I'm really scared, is I'll make things easy for me. And how do I make things easy for me? Now, I go up to men and I talk to different men or different event managers, different promoters, different people, right? And that is about in the nighttime. Now, in the daytime, it doesn't really matter if you're alone, right? If a girl asks you, you can just say like, yeah, I'm just, uh, you know, hanging out, waiting for a friend, or I'm actually going somewhere and I thought I'd just kill some time talk to you, right? But in the night time, there's a lot more pressure on the guy who's going out alone. So if I'm really going out alone and I'm in my head, you know, I think about, okay, how do I make it easy for me? I'll start approaching some guys, you know, some people, some DJs, some door staff. The reason I do that is because later at the night, you can even hit on their girls or they'll call you to private parties, they'll call you to private events and you can have a really good social circle. Now, apart from that, you know, like if, if I'm really in my head, if I really can't find a wing, what I'll do is I'll approach a girl and I'll talk to a random guy and I'll get him in the set. If there's a two set and I think, I, okay, you know, the other girl is gonna, you know, take the, uh, take the first girl I'm talking to because she's getting bored and I'm not really engaging her so much. What I do is usually I walk around the club, talk to a random guy and I get him in the set. All right. Now, the thing you have to understand with this is if you have a you know, decent approach, if you're like, hey man, listen, you know, there's this woman who really wants to talk to you and just want to introduce you to her. And then you tell her, hey, but don't tell her, you know, it's going to be kind of bad, right? And you can just take him to the target's friend and then you can just, you know, make them talk to each other. And it's, it's pretty instant, right? So you don't have to think, okay, you know, like if there's a three set, what do I do? If there's a two set, what do I do? This is exactly what you do. Now you can even go a bit further, which I would not really recommend because most of the people you'll find in the field who will be uh, willing to game with you will be really fucking bad at it. But it's okay, you know, if you need some company, talk to a guy and tell him, hey man, let's go, let's talk to some girls and do the first approach because he's not going to take the pressure of the first approach. And it's on you because you are from the community and you're learning, you know, pick up, learning it from everywhere. So it's on you to take the first step, all right? Now don't make it too easy for you. Don't be like, okay, I'm not gonna take the first step. If he doesn't approach, I'm not gonna approach. If you are alone, you're only accountable to yourself. Now remember that, guys. Now moving further, another big thing that helped me in my game is whenever I'm going out alone or even with a wing, I'm always approaching back to back to back. I'm not stopping for a smoke. I'm not going towards the bar. I'm just doing back-to-back -back approaches and the reason for that is back-to-back -back approaches will get you in the real social momentum and once you're in the momentum you don't care you know whether you're with a wing or you're all alone doing this so it doesn't really matter do back-to-back -back approaches now you might be like oh, how do I do back-to-back -back approaches now one thing you have to understand is night game is really good for that because in a club there are a lot of people right so there are a lot of people you can easily disperse from one place to another and you can just easily get lost in the crowd and if you're creeping out a few girls, if you because you're at a, a beginning stage right now, maybe, or if you're at an advanced stage too, if you're creeping out some girls, doesn't really matter. Because what you can do is you can just disperse in the crowd, 
right? And then it's again a whole new world and then you can keep on approaching. Now, another thing with back-to-back -back approaches is you create a lot of social proof. Now, what I mean by social proof is you look like a guy who knows a lot of people from the club, all right? Now, if a girl sees that, she'll be instantly attracted, right? Because it's pre-selection that's kicking in. If you were talking to a lot of girls, you're giving high fives to girls, different girls, you're just saying, hey, you know, you're opening a lot of girls and then once you're with your set, right, which you uh, decide on to stay with the whole, the 30 minutes, 45 minutes before pulling, whatever. You just take her, you know, you're just walking around with her in the club or you're just taking her towards the bar, changing locations, right? At that time, you can use this social proof of the people you have spoken to earlier in the night. Now, what I mean by that is you can just, you know, just if the person is walking by, just give him a high five. If you know a girl, just be like, hey, nice to meet you. And the girl is not aware that you just met these people on this particular night. So it's a lot of social proof. And I know it's a bit more advanced tactic, but yeah, guys, if you're learning this, you know, start learning that as well. Now, guys, understand, if you break your night, like if you are an advanced person who is listening to this, if you break your night, try to remember the last time you pulled a girl. Or try to remember the last 5 to 10 times you pulled a girl, alright? And you will understand that 80% of the times, during the pull, you were all alone, even if you went out with a wing. Now, this is the case with me, you know, even if I'm going out with a wing, 90% of the times, I'm the one who's pulling, right? And I'm pulling all alone, no one is doing it for me, as I've already said. No one will ever pull for you, you got to do it yourself. So if you think about it, you know, if you're an advanced guy, if you think about it, just try to understand that the last part of the night, which is the pull, right, you're usually doing it alone, usually, I would say. Now, if you're usually doing it alone, what is stopping you from, you know, gaming the first two parts of the night all alone? What is stopping you? The only thing is, it's only in our minds, right? And remember, as I told you about the law of state transference, if it's in your mind and if you're feeling uncomfortable about going out all alone, then other people will also be like, oh man, like, uh, yeah, you're pretty weird. Like, they will be, they'll feel weirded out when they talk to you. Because you'll be uncomfortable, you'll make them uncomfortable as well. But, you know, if you go out alone, if you talk to some guys and if they ask you, hey man, so who are you here with? Now, all alone, just chilling by myself they would have massive respect for you. And the reason for that is because most of the guys actually want to go out alone, but they're not able to, right? So even with girls, if you just, you know, if they're asking you, hey, uh, you know, are you alone? And we'll get to that later. You can just be like, yeah, you know, I'm just, I had to go to some other place. I thought I'd drop by for some time. You can just use anything to just, you know, shove off that question. And most of you, I know most of the guys who don't go out solo gaming is because they fear this question. They fear, you know, getting judged as a creep, right? And it's the, it's the opposite. 
it's the complete opposite so what's in your mind will happen right if you think that okay i'm uncomfortable going out all alone then you would be uncomfortable the other people who are talking to you would also feel uncomfortable right they'll think that you're a creep but if you are fucking comfortable if you are at ease going out alone they would be at complete ease and they would have massive respect for you for going out alone a lot of people don't go out alone because of their limited beliefs the beliefs that hold them back now the first belief is as i already said i need a wing and the reason this belief is there is because there's a lot of emotional dependency and it it has like deep rooted cause you know you might think it's funny but it's not if you are emotion if you are an emotionally dependent person if you have been dependent on your parents dependent on your mom your dad all your life right you'll have that need even in the field you'll be like ah oh, where's my crutch where's my emotional crutch and at that time you really need a wing but what happens with that is if you're a guy who's traveling if you're a guy who's going you know to a different country or if you're just a guy who just who's just gaming regularly and your wing is not available what will happen to you you know you'd be in your head you would not go out you would find rationalizations really bad excuses to not go out now another thing is amusement dependence now what i mean by amusement dependence is most of the people you know if they're going out they need a wing to amuse themselves right now for that reason you have to learn about self amusement you have to always amuse your own self and be your own joker be your own clown give your own self some positive emotions right if you're always dependent on someone then you're not mastering your emotions because you will be your emotions are dependent on an external source and if that external source is not there when you are in the field you would not feel happy right now most of the people what happens is if you are left alone in a room would you be happy would you be comfortable with your own self or would you want some external stimulus right and if you are a guy who wants more external stimulus try to cut that shit down try to go out alone you know try to experience the world in a different way and try to have some fun on your own time you know there's a concept uh, of aloneness versus loneliness we're not going to talk about it but aloneness is really different than loneliness if you feel lonely all the time that's because you are not really having a lot of fun with your own self right you're not amusing yourself so much but you know aloneness can be enjoyed also another reason is the approach anxiety now a lot of people uh, you know don't go out alone because they have a lot of approach anxiety and because of that approach anxiety it gives them a really negative uh, thought pattern like hey if i go out alone if i approach a girl i'm going to get beaten up by the boyfriend right or if i approach a girl something bad is going to happen she's going to she's going to shout at me she's going to probably murder me or something of that sort right so they have a really negative belief pattern and because of that they have a negative thought pattern you know based on approach anxiety so if you have approach anxiety man what is the best thing to do you know it you know i've said it a lot a lot of times approach as many girls as you can right don't hold yourself back don't let your limiting beliefs hold yourself back always calibrate once you have already opened the goal do not think about it hey if i approach her you know her boyfriend is going to come and never think about it like that if you want to think about it like that most of the girls would get creeped out because you'll take a lot of time to approach them and even once you approach them they'll be like i don't want to talk to you because i saw you looking at me for 2 minutes when you're contemplating the decision of approaching her now another thing is people think that pe- other people would have a judgmental attitude towards them if they go out alone now you have to understand one thing right it's really hard to go out alone for most of the people for 99% of the population they don't want to go out alone they don't want to do anything alone right they want to do everything with their friends with the family and it's not wrong it's not wrong but going out alone will teach you a lot more about your own self it will help you build your character it will help you build your soul right and it will help you understand pick up in a more deeper deeper level now let's see what will what's the worst that can happen if you go out alone what's the worst thing that is possible if you go out alone <laughs>
Now, as you can see, in this infield, the girl doesn't really want to talk to me. So what? Right? I'm still having fun. I'm still, you know, having fun with her and I'm still having fun in the conversation and I'm still persisting. Now, most of the people who are going out alone, they want to really early eject and I'm not doing that at all. Now, let's see another example of the worst thing that can happen to you when you're out in the field. Oh, oh, he's a shy guy, don't worry about him. He's a shy guy, don't worry about him. Trying to socialize with people. Okay, but socialize with me first. Yeah, yeah. we will. We'll you're a cool guy, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. Watch it, watch it. Don't socialize with me. You're also already. I love you already, man. What, what? I'm really sorry. What, man? It's apologize. No, no, you socialize with me first. I'm not, not girls, man. Let's no, 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 that's fine, that's fine. You go, bro. Hey, you go. You go. go. What, what? No, pass. Uh, sorry, sorry. No, no, just go. Just go. Okay, okay. We'll fine. 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 Okay. No, fuck it. No okay. fights. No, no. Yeah, no, we, we'll just fuck it, man. Okay. Let's go. Yeah, yeah. My son. No. Sorry. Go back. Name? Or no. Sorry, man. No, 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 sir. Pass. But you never pass. That's okay, that's okay, that's okay. No, you will become possessive, okay? I'm really sorry. No, no, no. That's all right, that's all right. That's all right. Cool, cool. No problem, yeah? Yeah. Cool. Yeah, yeah, that is fine. If you are socializing with me, that is fine, not with girls. Yeah, yeah, that's all right. That's all right. Pass, pass, sorry. Yeah. Cool. Go. That guy. Nice people. Have a good night. Yeah. Sure. You should have said. Wish you the same. Yeah. Wish you the same. Yeah. Good night. 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 Now, what happened over here? The boyfriend popped out out of somewhere. Now, that's actually the worst thing that can happen to you, right, if you're going out alone. Nothing else. Now, if you're thinking, okay, I might get beaten up, I might get judged as a creep, I might, you know, people might think of me as a creep, people might uh, completely label me as this is a loner guy that's never gonna happen that's never gonna happen it's all about our irrational fears right and most of the people fear this uh, situation as well the boyfriend coming out of somewhere right but if you've been following us you know how to tackle this situation and if you don't know how to tackle this situation click on the link above where you can learn about male psychology all right the only issue at hand is the girl might ask you who are you with right where are your friends now, first thing you have to understand is the reason why the girl would ask you this is because e either your pre-approach is wrong, which is your fashion sense, you know, you're wearing something torn and you're going out, you know, looking really shabby or the thing is either she wants to know your social value, you know, who do you hang out with, what kind of people do you hang out with, right? Maybe she's in really interested in knowing you more or even if you say something really uncalibrated, right? She might think, okay, this guy is a creep. I don't really want to talk to him, but then again, Maybe it's your fault. You said something really uncalibrated, something that was completely non-relatable and something that was offensive to her. Now, there's another note. You can easily create instant social proof. To counter this, what I mean by that is you can approach men, approach women, and you know about social proof. I've already explained it to you. You can just easily talk to anyone and the girl will be like, oh, these are the friends, right? Another thing is you can just tell her directly, hey, listen, I had to go somewhere else. I thought I had a few minutes, so I dropped by because I love the place. I love the music over here. Another thing you can say, yeah, I'm all by myself, so what? You know, trying to have fun by myself. I have a few days in the city, right? So there are numerous ways you can come up with different topics of how to counter this question, how to counter this particular issue. And the only reason if you're not going out alone is because you have let the irrational fear build and the emotional de dependence really build up to this level where you freak the fuck out if you have to go out alone. You can engage a girl so much that she wouldn't care about all of this. She wouldn't care if you're alone or if you're with someone. Just engage her so much in your reality that it does not matter, right? If a girl is attracted, if you're alone, you think that is going to stop her from coming to your place? That's actually a good thing. She's going to feel less judged. So guys, I hope to see you out in the field all by yourself doing this shit and crushing it. This is Arunav. Until next time.